Hello, everybody. Today we're going to do the poem, The Master of the House by Mambui Saini Oswald's Mitchali. Now, a little bit about the, the poet himself. Um, he was born in Natal in the 1940s. And um, he basically, in this poem, he describes the life in South Africa during the 1960s and the 1970s. Now, you must remember that in South Africa, there was a lot of racism. The black people were oppressed by the white population of South Africa. And in this poem, he describes the oppression of the black people, the treachery of the white people who were basically the masters and the black people who normally worked as slaves in the house of in the houses of uh, white people. So this poem tells us about the relationship between a slave and his master, which was not really great because you'll see in the poem that the master barely knows the slave as a person, just as a slave. And the way a slave led his life then full of misery, hunger, desperation, oppression, humiliation. And this uh, poem is, uh, also, is also meant to open our eyes to this kind of oppression in society and that it did exist then. And well, it does exist in some places even now, maybe there are no slaves now, but there's a lot of racism. So let's do this poem. Let's try and understand what, his, what Oswald is trying to say here. So the poem is titled The Master of the House. So naturally, we're talking about a white person here. And the slave says to the master, Master, I am a stranger to you. You don't know me. You're still my master. But will you hear my confession? I want to tell you something. Normally, these type of confessions, a slave couldn't make at that point of time because it could mean the end of his life. In this poem, you see a slave who runs away from his master's house. And in those days, a runaway slave was hunted down by dogs, beaten up, sometimes even killed. So he wants to confess this to his master. And he says, I am a faceless man who lives in the backyard of your house. I'm a faceless man. Not that he didn't have a face, but because he was not recognized as a person by his master. His master wouldn't know who he, who he was, even if he saw his face. So in that sense, he's faceless without any recognition. Though he lives in the backyard of his house, that's normally where the slaves would live. Um, he says, I share your table, your table that is so heavily heaped with bread and meat and fruit that it huffs like a horse drawing a coal cart. Now imagine the comparison. He says, I share your table. Now you'll understand how he shares his table in the next stanza. He says, your table is so heavily heaped with all this food. It's so heavy, heavy as a coal cart that it huffs like a horse. He compares the table to a horse that probably huffs because of all the load of food on it. And how does he share his master's table? How does he share this food that is on his master's table? As a rich man's to Lazarus, Lazarus was um, a man, a, bi a biblical figure who was denied even crumbs from a rich man's table. So he says, as the rich man to Lazarus, the crumbs were swept to my lap by my Lizzie. Now he has a companion here, Lizzie, and all the leftovers, all the food that was uneaten by the master, Lizzie would just collect them for him and say, sweetie, eat and be satisfied now because tomorrow we shall be gone. So you see here, they have plans to run away. So nightly, in the night, I run the gauntlet, that is, I take a risk. I wrestle with your mastiff, that is, your dog, Caesar, the name of the dog. And why does he fight with the mastiff? For the bone that's pregnant with meat, for the bone that's pregnant, that's full of meat, that's juicy with meat. 
so he fights with a dog for food and wash it down yeah and swallow it with pussy's milk that is he takes milk from the bowl of the cat so you can see that this slave is basically starved crumbs from the table doesn't have enough food he has to eat the food of the animals and he says he compares himself to an animal he says i am the nocturnal animal nocturnal active at night i'm the nocturnal animal that steals through the fenced lair fenced it's all fenced up a lair is like a cave a lion's den it's all fenced he says he has to steal through the fence lair to meet my mate to meet my companion lizzy and flee at the break of dawn i flee i run away just before dawn breaks before the hunter and the hounds run me to ground so they had to really run quickly and be sure where they were going of course they didn't know they had no way to go but they just had to run run away from the brutality of their white masters and as i told you in the beginning um, all the runaway slaves they they ran a huge risk of being killed of being hunted down by dogs and beaten to death sometimes taken back people would even their white masters would even break their ankles so that they wouldn't try to run away the next time so this was the poem you have to understand what the theme of the poem is the oppression of the black people in south africa they were oppressed by the white people there's basically no rhyme sequence there's no rhyming there's no rhyme sequence in the poem so it's kind of an open verse poem and the theme of the poem is of course um what i just said he the oppression of the black people by the white people that's all for this poem